ran the battery down last night. <laughs> but I actually ran it down this morning because I was charging the big power brick uh, massively. It was it was way drained, and I woke up this morning with the alarm going off on the inverter. Super cool setup. I like it. I like this 400 watt full sine wave power inverter better than I like the yellow one that I showed in the short the other day. Uh, because the other one has a fan that runs all the time, so it's drawing a lot more power. Right now it's saying this battery is at... Yeah, it's low, 4%. Uh, it's an AGM battery though, so it should be fine. Anyway, um, yeah, like I was saying, the other power inverter, um, I think it's only 300 watts, and the fan runs constantly, which means that even though you know, as it's charging other items, it's using a lot more power to do that than this one is. Um, this 400 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter, and I bought it online, I got it off of Amazon, um, it also has a fan, but the fan only kicks on when it needs the fan to kick on. So, you know, best of both worlds, I guess. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start measuring out for these walls. Very cool. Take a couple of measurements just to make sure that everything's accurate, even though I'm 99 and 9 tenths percent sure that uh, this is a, a level loft, because I did throw a level on it. Everything else is measured perfectly. And I know it's not the most accurate thing because I'm not using a level when I'm measuring, but I Doing the same thing on every one so I can get pretty close. So we're looking at seven feet in total height uh, from the floor to the top. And I'm going to cut that back by a quarter of an inch so that I know it's going to slide up there. According to Ward, I pick up about an eighth of an inch when I nail two boards together anyway. So, like I said, that's 84 inches. I'm going to go 83 and three quarters on these. And then I need to also measure out from the wall, and I already have a, a board right here at six feet, and I'm going to make all my internal measurements I'm going to make all my internal measurements accurate, and then we'll do the goof off on the uh, inside of the um, pantry, which is going to be in the middle of these two rooms. I'm going to have to move a few things here. And that's six feet. I'm going to need to move quite a bit of stuff to get my seven feet I need to build. <laughs> All right, that's why I'm not living in here. It's because i got to keep moving crap. Every time I turn around, i got to move something out of my way. All right, I need to get a visualization of how deep this is going to be. And originally I thought eight feet. My loft comes out to about 10 feet. All right, so that's eight feet right there. Oh yeah, that'll be no problem at all. Yeah, let's do this. This is where the staircase is going to end, and this is where the bathroom is going to be, or the wall of the bathroom is going to be on the inside of the eight foot line. Um, this gives me this much room to get in underneath the staircase, which is where all the electrical is going to be. So that's kind of why I had to space this side and all the way down through the pantry uh, before I get too busy doing stuff here. So 
so I need eight feet. And that gives me nine, ten, just a little bit over ten feet, about ten foot three inches. It gives me two foot three inches. And since it's going to be this way, I can kind of slap the door right in the middle. And uh, not have a problem. I'll go with a two and a half foot door, so a 30 inch door. I don't really want to go all the way over here with it. Okay, cool. Here's a great reason why I dry fit everything before I start nailing off now because, you know, besides the fact that I'm an idiot. <laughs> so these I cut at the height of the wall, but I did not subtract off for the two by fours on either end. So now I needed 83 and three quarter on my top plate and my bottom plate. Well, I cut these at 83 and three quarter, which is wrong because now, since I didn't account for the top plate and the bottom plate. Ah. I am an inch and a half too thick, or three inches too thick. So I need to cut all of these by three more inches. So I need to take the inch and a half off of all of these again. That's why I don't nail things right off the bat anymore, because too many times framing walls and, and building everything, I put a million friggin' nails in something and only to come back and realize that it was the wrong size. Ha, <laughs>
let's get it placed at six feet and then uh, I'll get it leveled out at the bottom at six feet first. sturdy right on and that gives some added support to the loft as well the reason why I wanted it six feet wide is because then I could put a bathroom or a shower or tub in the back here and I'll probably scooch it against this wall because uh, if I've got water in here before I have a well I'll store it in the pantry with a pump and an on-demand water heater in there um, and then I'll run PEX lines from that to the shower probably to uh, sink here in the bathroom um, and then I'll run it to the sink in the kitchen which will be the next wall I'm going to build but with that six feet, that gives me plenty of room to get a shower tub enclosure in here. And then I might have a little room at the end here where I could just, you know, build a little cupboard for some towels and stuff. Nice. And then I need to worry about um, the staircase here. So like I said before, the stairs are going to lop. Let's move the camera here for you. Like I said before, the stairs are going to end up right here on the uh, on the end of this floor joist in the loft. So that's going to give me uh, oh about 25, 26 inches between um, this wall that's going to be here and the uh, underside of the staircase, which is going to have its own door, uh, so that you can get it in and out of there to adjust all the electric and stuff like that. And I might have to split that door, make it 18 inch handles. Might have to, uh, might have to split this door so it opens in two, so each side is 18 inches so that it doesn't get caught in there. I'm not worried about the swing of this door because the uh, plan or idea that I have for a door um, is not gonna be a, a hinge door. I'm not doing a pocket door either. I'm gonna do a, uh, a barn style door on tracks that'll slide all the way back over to here to open it up, slide all the way over to there to close it. So I'll need a, a gap here, and I'll need a gap, uh, I'll need to end that gap like right about here so that when that door swings, it'll open up all the way into there. So I'll have to split that difference. <laughs>
battery died when I was raising the wall. Bummer. Uh, but I'll bring the... We should pop a couple up there too. I'll bring this cell phone camera into here and show you how this wall lined up. Um, actually, I'm pretty satisfied. So this piece, this 2x4 on the bottom, I'm going to cut out so that the floor matches when it runs. Uh, but yeah, let me show you what we got. So I was able to, the way this wall lined up, use that floor joist from the loft to nail into. Super awesome. And this is a 30 inch wide door. It better be after all the measurements I just took. <laughs> yeah, 30 inches wide. Um, and my plan for an actual door in this is going to be one of those sliding, you know, kind of barn door looking things. Because uh, basically, Right there is 36 inches, All right? So I should have more than 36 inches over on this side. So you can slide the door all the way back here, all the way open, uh, and then slide it all the way closed when someone's in there. Sweet. Now I need to clean up all this junk that's over here, and I need to move it all into here so it's out of the way and I can do the kitchen probably tomorrow morning. I like, doing a, I like doing a project that I can get done in a day. I could have actually probably gotten all of this done yesterday, but I'm not out to kill myself, and I know there's only so much I can get done on any given week anyway, and it's not really going to speed up me getting in here. So I went and picked up the extra 2x4s that I needed at the orange store today. Picked up a little something for dinner, and then when I got done yesterday uh, framing in the bathroom, I went ahead and moved everything out of here. So if there's some wet patches on the floor, some moisture, it's not the end of the world kind of stuff, but it had quite a bit of a chance to dry out yesterday. Rather than calculate how big my pantry is going to be, I thought it would just be easier if I calculated how big my kitchen needs to be. I'll throw the wall up there, and then whatever's left over will be the pantry, uh, which will still be a pretty big room. So let me grab the tape measure here, and we'll go over a few measurements that I have in my head of how I want to do this. So I only have two considerations here. Um, one is how big are the counters going to be in my kitchen, and two is how much room do I want in between the counters. Um, and at that point, that'll determine the width of my kitchen. I'll slap up the wall right here. It's going to be the same depth as that wall. So it'll be uh, basically, what was that, an eight-foot depth? Yeah. And uh, that'll bring it out to here. Um, but the, the couple of things that, from everything that I've read about, and what's comfortable for me is is this 24 inch mark, right? So a 24 inch mark on the top of my counter gives me this much room to work with. And, and comfortably, you can't really get that much further back. Um, I mean, I, I can if I'm, if I'm extending my arms with a rolling pin, but 24 inches is a great amount of counter space. And I want all of my countertops to be solid except for the one over here. The one over here is going to have a sink in it. Now, why wouldn't I put my sink where my window is, um, frankly, because I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff in front of that window on that counter, uh, as I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff besides washing dishes, right? I'm going to wash dishes once a day, or when I'm done using them, basically. Uh, but I want to look out that window when I'm actually doing something that I enjoy, and, and I'll get a lot more use out of it there. I don't need to look out the window when I'm washing dishes. All right, so I've got my counter. 
it's going to end right there. And then I've got my other counter right now. It's going to end right there. And that is going to give me this much room to move around in my kitchen. This will be the wall. I've got kitchen counter, I'll have a stove here, counter runs across, counter runs across, counter runs across, I'll have a refrigerator back over here, I'll have my sink right here, uh, I'll run water lines up into here and over into the pantry where I'll have an on-demand water heater, a water storage tank, um, and that'll give me hot and cold running water in here to do dishes, which will be nice, I won't have to boil water anymore. That I'll also run PEX into the bathroom for the bathroom sink um, as well, and eventually the shower and bathtub. Uh, so this should be just about perfect. I figure I got about two and a half feet, maybe 30 inches inside the um, pantry after, if I were to shelve both sides with a one foot shelf on both sides. Uh, but yeah, I don't see a negative part of this. Plenty of room to stand in here, walk around, bend over, grab stuff. It's not going to be in the way. I can kick people out of my kitchen. If you've watched any of you know, my channel at all for any amount of time, you know I like to cook. I like to bake. So kitchen's kind of important. Even though it's only a cabin, I want that kitchen. I want this kitchen to be to the point where I can do bread and cookies and cakes and basically just go crazy baking again. Um, and have some shelving up over here for bread baskets, for proofing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of this. This is gonna this is gonna be very doable. So the first thing I gotta do is build a wall, and the nice thing is that this is like I said, eight feet. So to line that wall up, I'll be able to shove a couple of two by fours against the wall here, and use those to line up this wall uh, for the distance to make sure the distance is absolutely accurate. Because uh, those two by fours I have are eight footers. Cool. Let's do this.
All right, pantry and kitchen are done. Uh, there's a couple of more boards I want to nail off just so I'll have better nailers when I line the inside of these things and, and finish them off. Uh, but they're nothing that has to be done right this minute. Next project's going to be um, replacing the OSB on the loft and building the staircase. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if I could do all that in one video. <laughs> Especially since I've never built a staircase either. But it'll give me good practice. So that's it, you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks as always for watching. If you have not done so, and might, now might be a good time to consider clicking that subscribe button down below and ringing that bell for notifications for all. Uh, let you know when I have new videos out. Thank you guys very much. I'll see ya. I gotta clean this mess up and cook dinner.